Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. First of all, I'm on Patreon, there will be a dedicated video about it, end of plug. Today we are going to talk about a very special piece of gear, the Roland Sound Canvas SC55. This 1991 jack of all trades was primarily aimed at the, how Sound on Sound put it so nicely back then, still undefined multimedia market in which technologies of computers, video and audio are supposed to come together to provide all new forms of entertainment, education and information dissemination. In other words, computer games, recreational MIDI file playback and karaoke. Although the SC55 was the first sound canvas Roland put to the market, it was not the first piece of gear to cover that fast-growing niche. The MT32, originally designed as an instrument for amateur musicians, became the de facto standard for high-end computer game soundtrack playback. Speaking of standards, the SC55 was also the first unit to feature general MIDI, a term synthheads often associate with cheesy bread and butter sounds for the uninitiated. Retro gamers, on the other hand, love the SC55, not only because it elevates the soundtrack of games like Descent, Monkey Island 2 and Sam and Max hit the roads to a whole new level, but also because Bobby Prince used it as the primary composition tool when he wrote the soundtrack for Doom 2. So will it run Doom? At the first glance the Roland SC55 is too small for one of these early 90s hi-fi towers, but it is ticking all the boxes. A big orange display with a meter bridge, many buttons spread out in a way that actually makes sense and two, yes two, MIDI inputs. I am not going to complain about the RCA and mini jack connectors. There are 317 32 kHz 16-bit sounds based on the use RSPCM and D's LA synthesis technology, organized according to the aforementioned general MIDI specifications. However, the first production run of the SC55 without the GM logo does not fully comply with the standard. I'm not gonna torture you with an exhaustive demonstration of the tones, but we should have a quick listen to the pianos, basses, orchestra sounds, Let's crank up the Rise of the Triad soundtrack. You can pan the sounds, add reverb and chorus and there is a more or less hidden menu that lets you edit some of the synthesis parameters, including filter, ADSR envelope and vibrato. Roland included an IR remote control that I never had the pleasure to use. This remote control was designed to control another piece of gear as well, the Roland Sound Brush, a MIDI file player and sequencer. The sound canvas is 16-part multi-timbral and the partial-based Rompler engine will eat up to 24 voices of polyphony faster than you can say Jack Robinson. Just like last week's Yamaha RX-15, I borrowed this unit from my dear friend Wendy and prices are not completely out of control, but I'm not sure if I would pay that much money for a non-mint unit. The Roland SC55 seems like a versatile piece of gear. Why are there so many people who hate it, like it IDDQD, your IDKFA during a null modem cable mano a mano deathmatch? You have already heard the SC55 in our little intro tune. They must have been really proud of that snare back then. I'm looking forward to hearing some subtler tones from the Legoveld approved TR-808 kit. Not so bad. These sounds are definitely worthy of a 90s Disney movie. You have seen that the parameters can be tweaked via the front panel, but the built-in sound shaping tools are not the most radical ones, an understandable decision for a set and forget instrument. However, I haven't found a way to tweak the parameters of the synth engine via MIDI without going all the way to Sysex land. 
Still, the basic internal mixer functions can be controlled using a standard MIDI controller. Let's add some guitar pedals and a fader box for more pronounced effects and mixerless mixing. have called, they want their sounds back. MIDI control is tight, but the sounds are hit or miss. Not unusual for a preset-based machine. As frequent viewers of this show might know, my friends are not only fantastic people, they also have amassed a huge amount of gear. I am currently working on the ever-growing Bad Gear sample library and therefore I have borrowed a super nice Neve lunchbox from my dear friend and better gear partner in crime, Raimund. I wanna know how much professional sheen we can get out of the OG sound canvas with that fancy channel strip in this liquid funk DOS game soundtrack on steroids melodic drum and bass track. The Roland Sound Canvas SC55 is like a Swiss army knife for music production and listening to MIDI files without a computer. Aimed at consumers, it is easier to use than other sample-based instruments from that time, but also more limited than, for example, the Roland D range. We shouldn't forget that the SC55 was only the beginning. There is a mind-boggling number of sound canvases, products based on sound canvas technology, the sound canvas VA and many instruments similar to the sound canvas from other brands like Korg or Yamaha. It is not always easy to say if you need a certain electronic musical instrument. And in this case it is even more difficult as standardized MIDI playback using crusty late 80 samples has been integrated in many apps, DAWs and plugins. I would say it's okay to admit that we want certain things, even if we don't necessarily need them. You want a proper piano, Prodigy style strings, a nice 808 kit and odd sound effects without having to use a computer, get an old school sound canvas. This is also the perfect excuse for the 90s kids among us who couldn't afford one back then and absolutely need the ultimate canonical MIDI sound module for their Doom DOSBox sessions. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.